Alright, so I got a uh, UR65 here with a Crazy B board and a SBI receiver built in to D8 receiver and I, as you can see, I'm running it on the TBS Tango 2 and you guys have probably seen Bruce's video on RC model reviews on his little uh, repeater that he built and I went ahead and built one off of a multi-protocol module. This is not a a new idea. In fact, I actually did something like this four years ago, and I'll put a link to that video. It's February 22nd, 2016. I took a Dragon Link and I used a repeater to Free Sky. So I used my Tyrannus and um, used that uh, Free Sky re receiver to repeat to um, a Dragon Link transmitter via PPM. This is the same idea. So basically, you have a uh, Crossfire Nano receiver here in PPM mode, and it is sending its PPM signal to the multi protocol module, and that is then repeating the steel and sending it out um, over 2.4 gigahertz to the UR65. So, let me go ahead and explain how I put this together. It's actually not too difficult, and there's a little soldering involved, and this I pulled off of a um, this is the jumper, the uh... Alright, so this is the uh, jumper uh, JP4 and 1 uh, multi-protocol module that comes with the T12, T12 transmitter. I think it also came in early versions of the T16 as well. But the important thing is you need a multi-protocol module that has this dial here so they can run in PPM mode. Um, there are other ones that don't have that, and I haven't gotten this to work. So I was going to put this video out later, but I figured I might as well show you guys how it works in PPM mode. I actually have gotten this working, uh, I've had this working for a while now. I've just been putting off on the video because I couldn't figure out how to get this to work in serial mode. And I'm still working on that. I think I can get it to work, but um, there's a bunch of technical hurdles I'm not going to get into into this video, but if I get that figured out I'll have another video later but it does work in PPM mode I know that there's issues about latency I I don't know I'll show you some flight footage at the end you guys can tell me if you think that the latency is a problem I don't feel like it's, a, it's that big of an issue and you know because you guys will see me hitting the gates with this thing so I don't know I'm not a, I'm not a whoop racer so I'm not a I'm not really good uh, candidate to tell you if the latency is really a big issue or not but for me it didn't seem like it was a big issue all right, so let me go ahead and show you how this is wired up first of all. Obviously you need some kind of power source here and I'm just using a 2S LiPo here with a JST connector. Um, the voltage range for this, at, um, I'll put it up on the screen here, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but 2S is totally fine. And I am having it powered here on this pin here for ground, this pin here for power, and then the white pin here is going to be uh, the PPM signal. So that's the one at the top is PPM. This one doesn't do anything, the second one. The third one down is power, or, or VBAT, in this case 2S power. And the fourth one down is ground. And that's how I have it wired up. And so then uh, you have power for the JST connector on these two pads here. And then you have signal and power for the Crossfire Nano receiver here. And on the Crossfire receiver, I'm just using the uh, channel one for PPM. So you've got uh, ground, power and then the white is here as channel 1 and it's configured for PPM and then the TX for channel 2 doesn't do anything, it's not connected to anything as you can see right there, it's not connected to anything so the first thing you want to do is once you power this up you want to go ahead and uh, bind up the receiver, update it through the Crossfire transmitter, the Tango 2 before you do any binding on the multi-protocol module and then also the second thing you want to be aware of is that you're going to probably want to get the latest firmware for the multi-protocol module. Uh, I'll put a link in the, in the description where you can get that. There's a website called um, multimodule.org and it will go through the steps and show you which um, file to get because it's kind of confusing as to which file you need to get. I'll actually put up a screenshot here and show you the selections I chose to download the correct file and then um, you're going to need to plug this into 
uh, USB here into your computer and download another program called Flash Multi to update the multi protocol module to the latest firmware. I had older firmware on this, I could not get this to bind on the older firmware. But when it, once I updated the module to the newest firmware, binding was not a problem. I'll talk about binding here a little bit in a second, but let me sure, first show you how it's to set up the, the crossfire receiver first. You gotta do that first before you do any binding, otherwise it's not gonna work. Um, it detects the channels on your radio and it will not initialize unless the throttle is all the way down. And so your radio, um, uh, I have the AETR uh, firmware on this multi-protocol module and that needs to match on here, otherwise uh, the, if the channels are mismatched then the multi-protocol module will not initialize. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you what how the receiver is set up here. Go into the Crossfire menu, and then you want to go into the Crossfire Nano receiver. And I have uh, telemetry turned off. Uh, I don't know if it really matters if it's on or off or not. Um, I just turned it off, and then on the output map I have uh, PPM set to output one right there. That's the one that you need to make sure that's on PPM and not Crossfire. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Uh, the rest I left alone. I didn't change anything else. And then of course, um, when you go in here, you, want, you do your nor the normal bind procedure. Um, that's not any different. You just go over, I'm sorry, go back out to Tango 2 Crossfire. And then you just go here and hit bind. Obviously you have to um, hit the bind button on the receiver. That procedure is no different than a typical crossfire binding procedure. That's, I'm not going to show you that. Okay, so once you uh, have, have a successful bind, you'll have a green light on the receiver and then you can go ahead and, and do the bind procedure for your uh, D8 receiver or D16 receiver. Okay, so in order to do the binding on the multi-protocol module side, you need to uh, know what these little numbers and letters mean for this dial here and what protocol to select. So there's a chart there on one of the pages. I'll put it up on the chart here on the screen here. And you need to be in the right uh, mode here to select the correct protocol. So for uh, on this particular module, it's uh, pointed to letter A or uh, protocol 10. And that is FreeSky D8 mode. Uh, B is going to be FreeSky D16 mode FCC, and then C is uh, FreeSky D16 mode LBT or, or EU. Um, and then there's some other ones here on that table, like for FlySky, there's going to be over here. I haven't tested. I have. I haven't tested FlySky yet. I'm pretty sure it'll still work. Um, D8 D16 mode definitely does work. I've tested that on this whoop here, and I've flown it, so I can I can assure you that it's working. But the uh, uh, whip here is in D8 mode, so I have it pointed to uh, the letter A here, or uh, protocol 10, that's uh, FreeSky D8. So you want to make sure that that's set to there, and then you, when you, um, to put this into bind mode, you're going to press and hold the button while you're powering it up. You're going to hold the button for three seconds, and then it'll start flashing very quickly, and then you'll know when you're in bind mode. And then, you, you actually, what you want to do is you want to put the... Uh, the FreeSky receiver into bind mode first, and then power up the uh, multi-protocol module in bind mode. So go ahead and I'll show you that. Hold down the button, and we'll go ahead and power this up. Hold it down. <clears throat> Welcome to Tango 2. Okay, so I forgot I turned off my Tango 2. This radio needs to be on for this to work, otherwise it won't go into bind mode because the, the as I said earlier, the multi-protocol module will not initialize. So you want to make sure that your Tango 2 is on, bound of course, and then the throttle all the way down. That's important, otherwise it won't initialize. So let's try this again. We're going to hold on the bind button and power this up. There we go. And then you should see this flashing red light. It should be flashing about like that. And then now that's in bind mode. And assuming your receiver was in bind mode, it will eventually stop like that. You'll get a solid light. And then you know you're bound. And that's it. There's nothing else to it. Um, you're bound. And then uh, you just, you know, obviously the crossfire receiver is bound. You just need to have some sort of an antenna on here. I just have this sort of temporary antenna on here. Uh, obviously the range of the crossfire receiver is not that important. 
because um, actually the antenna, the antenna you put on here is not really that important. Because you're, I'm assuming you're going to probably keep this fairly close to you, so you probably want a good antenna on this side here for the 2.4 gigahertz, so you get good transmission to your FreeSky receiver. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I can try and maybe answer them in a follow video, but it's procedure's pretty simple. Just gotta make sure your Crossfire receiver is in PPM mode. And um, yeah, I'm gonna try and figure out how to get this to work in serial mode because I, I know that uh, you guys are worried about latency and all that. Um, I'm still working on that. There's problems. <laughs> it's complicated. Anyway, I um, hope you found this video helpful. Uh, please give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And I'll talk to you guys later.